Hello and what's up guys? In the previous video, I have promised you that I will go over the development work inside Rust2 environment. But before jumping into that, I found that it would be essential to go over uh, uh, two additional concepts inside Rust2. And uh, I will go over them for the next uh, two videos. And in this video, I will show you how to uh, activate a, a multi multiple Rust2 nodes at the same time. And this would be very essential, especially when you are dealing with huge uh, Rust2 projects. So I advise you to uh, watch this video till the end. And of course, subscribe, uh, subscribe to my channel and do not forget to hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. So let's start. Okay, so I have a prepared a file as usual. So the way to activate multiple Rust2 nodes, as I told you before, is by using what we call a launch file uh, inside Rust2. And this is essentially a Python, uh, Python 3 script. Uh, and I will go over it in a minute. Uh, but before doing that, uh, I want to elaborate uh, and explain more about the idea of activating multiple nodes at the same time using the turtle sim. Uh, if you didn't go over my previous videos uh, about the turtle sim and how I used it with the RQT graph, please go ahead and click on the upper right corner to do so. Uh, so to do that, I will open up my terminal. And before I like activating many nodes at the same time, I want to clarify a couple of points. So first, uh, if you want to uh, activate a certain turtle node, the way to do it is to use Rust 2 run turtle sim and turtle sim node. It will take a bit of time. Now, this is the turtle here activated. And if I go and open a new terminal window, in order to uh, show you the information about this node, I will use Rust2 node list. And this is the only node that is active right now. So I will use Rust2 node info. And here we go. So as you can see, this is the name of the uh, node and this is the forward slash and this is actually the default namespace of this node because each node has a specific namespace associated with it and this is the default one, the forward slash. And as for the subscribers, which means the uh, topics to which this uh, node is subscribed to, uh, you can see you have, for example, the cmdvel uh, turtle one actually cmdvel and this is the namespace and the same thing for the publishers to which the node is uh, publishing the topics to which it is publishing also the forward slash is there for the services for the actions it is the same so it is a good practice whenever you are dealing with like uh, similar nodes let's say here i am dealing with the turtle nodes it is a good practice to uh, give each node a specific namespace so you don't, so you don't get things confused. Uh, so this is a very important note. So let me clear that. Now the, the second thing that I wanted to clarify is the mimic node inside provided by the turtle sim. And the way to activate it is by using ros2 run turtle sim and it's called mimic and this not actually what does what, what it does is it allows you to uh, uh, like take two turtles and allow one of them to mimic the other one so the name is very descriptive it's very slow i don't know why okay Okay, uh, no, sorry, it's already activated. Uh, it doesn't give any uh, response, actually. 
So let me open up a new window and Rust 2 not list. And let me show you the information about the mimic nod, which is right here. So as you can see, this mimic nod is subscribed to the uh, input pause, which is actually monitoring the, pos the position of uh, the coordinates of a certain turtle, like the X, Y, and Z, and the orientation uh, coordinates. And it's publishing like data to this topic right here, the CMDVAL, which is controlling another turtle, which you are supposed, which is supposed to mimic the previous one, uh, which are uh, that we are monitoring its position. So this is the basic idea of the mimic node. So now I have clarified these two ideas. We can proceed right now. Okay. Uh, so. Let me first close these and go over the launch file. Uh, I have already created a directory called launch and inside of it I put a Python uh, file. Uh, now if you don't know how to create uh, uh, a file or a uh, directory inside Ubuntu, uh, please go ahead and watch my videos right now. I've discussed these extensively in the previous videos. So this is actually the uh, launch file that is supposed to run my multiple nodes simultaneously. So uh, you don't you don't need to know like Python very well for this tutorial because I will uh, do my best and I will exp by explaining uh, each line of code as I go over this uh, script. Uh, but I advise you to uh, learn Python and C++ or at least one of these languages because I told you before that Rust 2 and Rust actually before it uh, adopt, uh, adopted the, the Python and the C++ languages uh, officially. So it's very useful. It would be very beneficial to learn them. So don't worry about it here. Uh, so uh, you, you just need like the basic knowledge of the programming, like what is a method, what is a loop, uh, what is the return, etc. So don't worry. Now here uh, in the first two lines, I have uploaded uh, or imported uh, certain uh, libraries or what we call modules. So here you will have the launch description and the node module. And uh, then I will define inside the script a certain uh, method. And this is like a, a, uh, a built up name. So you cannot change it. It should be like this, like literally. And what we are doing here is we uh, is that we are overloading a a built-in function. So this function is already there, and we are uh, like changing its internal code. If you know what I mean. Uh, now here, of course, for every function, you will need a return in order to produce a certain output, and we will use the launch description uh, that we just uploaded or imported right imported right here. So here, the launch description will take. Uh, three uh, three arguments in this case and it will take as many arguments as you want actually and these will include the nodes that you want to activate simultaneously in this case I'm interested in uh, activating two turtle sim nodes as you can see and the mimic node and then I will use the mimic in order to uh, like produce the same behavior for the two uh, turtle nodes as I explained earlier uh, now, in here for each node, you will need to specify four arguments for the package and the uh, uh, and the node executable. These names should be like uh, names that are already there in the Rust2 package, TurtleSim package. So you cannot change them. Okay. So these needs to be need to be like this. As for the node namespace and the uh, node name, like right here, you can uh, put them the way you want. You can actually choose any string that you want for the namespace and for the name. But as I advised you earlier, the namespace need to be unique for each turtle uh, node. So we don't get things confused. So as you can see, turtle sim one here and here turtle sim two. And also I have changed the node name, but this is not like really necessary. As long as you change the namespace, 
everything will be unique for each node. Uh, as for the uh, third node, which is the mimic, I specified a different argument, which is called remappings. And actually, I went over the idea of remapping earlier, uh, and I changed like uh, some properties of a certain node. So you can watch my video about it uh, before proceeding if you want. Uh, so as you can see here, I have remapped like the topics that were available under subscribers and publishers, as I showed you earlier uh, concerning the mimic node information. Uh, so for the input pause that uh, to which the mimic node is subscribed, I've changed it into turtle sim1, turtle1 one pause in order to monitor the position of the first turtle right here. And as for the cmd val, uh, to which the, the topic to which the mimic node is uh, publishing, I've changed it or remapped it into the uh, second turtle cmd val in order to control it. So right now I can use mimic in order to control the motion of the second turtle so it mimics the first one. So I hope this script is clear by now. Uh, and actually, uh, I will demonstrate it right now. So let me launch it. And the way to launch it is first, you need to make sure that you are in the directory where the file is. Uh, so you can change the directory to desktop and I think it's uppercase no it's lowercase okay so as you can see this is my file right here and the way to uh, launch it is to use launch command not run command okay so launch file dot py so as you can see, you have first the launch node that is activating all the other nodes. And then you have three nodes, two turtle nodes and the mimic node, okay? So as you can see, we have two windows right here and the mimic is actually operating in the background. So right now, I, I wish to control like one of the turtles and I want the other one to mimic it. And the way to do it is like you can do you can do it in many ways you can publish to a to the topic cmd val of the first turtle uh, and actually i have explained the uh, how do how do the topics function inside rust2 by sending continuous messages and you can go over my videos uh, in uh, in which i have explained about topics uh, but right now for the purpose of uh, like uh, explaining the launch and how does it uh, does it behave i will use the teleoperation key in order to control like one of the turtles using my keyboard and i will do that using cross to run turtle sim double tab because i forgot like the literal name and this is it the teleoperation key now if i try to control like one of the turtles using my keyboard, it will not work. And guess why? Actually, because if you open another window and you just like uh, list all the information about the teleoperation turtle node using cross to node info, you will find that the publisher like the topics to which my keyboard is publishing, uh, among them you will have this topic right here, which is controlling the turtle, one of the turtles, uh, because it's called cmdval. And as you can see, its name uh, is turtle1cmdval, and the name space is the forward slash. And this will not work actually, because I have changed the default name space for the two turtles into some unique name spaces. So I need to change that. So instead, like I will stop my teleoperation key. So I will use the concept of remapping and I went over the concept of remapping uh, earlier in earlier video in an earlier video. So you can go over that uh, and I have explained this concept and how to apply it. So I will use it right here to run the teleoperation key. So I will use turtle sim. Uh, 
and then I will use the teleoperation key but for now I would run it by uh, after remapping the argument to another one uh, so I will use the ROS args and then I will use R for remapping and let me take the name of the original topic like what is the origin name it's here and I just need to change it into let me open the code again where I have the uh, namespace of the first node called turtlesum1 and right now okay and right now the teleoperation key will be activated but it will publish to this topic instead which is the same one that is controlling this turtle right here if you go over the information of this turtle right here uh, as I have changed it using my launch, uh, my launch uh, Python script so if I run it right now and I try to activate it and boom it worked now I'm controlling one of the turtles actually in one of the windows and the other one is mimicking it now this is the concept of uh, the launch file and how is it how it is used to launch multiple nodes so I actually before closing everything let me show you what is going on using the RQT graph and the RQT graph is actually a very useful tool to visualize all the processes that are active uh, that are active right now so in order to launch it I will use RQT graph and be patient with me a little bit so okay make sure that you have selected the nuts topics uh, and the active ones and I have explained that in an earlier video when I've talked about the RQT graph and as you can see the nodes that are encircled and uh, here are the topics with the rectangles around them so here you will have the launch node uh, that is uh, activating all the other nodes including the mimic the turtle 1 and the turtle 2 so uh, as you can see uh, first the turtle 1 is uh, publishing its position so you can think about it as a feedback and then this position uh, is fed to the mimic uh, node and the mimic node will produce a correspondent uh, cmdvel uh, a correspondent command or a message to the cmdvel topic of the second turtle and based on that it will control the, se se the second uh, turtle node and actually this node will also provide a certain feedback uh, that is monitoring its position but actually it's not being used by any other node so it's not like showing up right here but believe me it is there uh, so actually you can uh, take it to the extreme and create a chain of turtles that can mimic each other uh, using multiple uh, turtle and mimic nodes and using a launch file to activate them all together uh, and this where you can find like the importance of the uh, launch file so i hope you enjoyed this video guys and learned from it uh, and in the next video i will go over the ROS bag and i will show you how to uh, like store and log data from a certain topic or a service etc or a continuous stream of information but for now this is it so I bid you farewell and I hope to see you guys later on.